is they're going to ask you to find the least common denominator and then they'll give you two fractions. So they're gonna start out with nice little baby fractions like three over 10 X squared. And they'll put an and in between them initially because they're not gonna have you add it or subtract it or do anything with it. They're just focusing on, can you get that least common denominator, okay? So if you can do it in your head, that's great. If not, you're gonna use the button, but you're gonna take the coefficients and you're gonna find the least common multiple of 10 and 15. So the smallest number that both 10 and 15 go into. Can we do that in our head? If you can't do it in your head, that's okay. You can start the old fashioned way. Like when I used to teach this in middle school, you would take like say the first number and you'd go 10 and then you just start counting by 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. All right, that's me counting by tens. And then you take the 15, does 15 go into 10? Nope. Does 15 go into 20? Nope. Does 15 go into 30? Yes. So then that means 30 is the least common denominator, the least common multiple because 10 goes into 30, 15 goes into 30. So, I mean, you can do this by hand, okay? So for my least common denominator, I know that the coefficient part of it is 30. Okay, now I have to take a look at the variables. Okay, I've got an x squared in the first one. I have an x in the second one. Okay, now as weird as this seems, if I am trying for variables with exponents, if I am trying to find the least common denominator, you pick the variable with the highest exponent. And that's, that's kind of just like a little mnemonic way to, if you can just straight up memorize that, that's gonna help you. All right, you pick the variable with the highest exponent turns, and so they're opposite, right? It says least common denominator, but you pick the highest exponent. So I've got an X to the first and an X squared, which means then I'm gonna pick the X squared. And that's my least common denominator. Okay, now just in case, I think they may follow up this type of question in this section and go ahead and ask you to maybe add them or maybe subtract them or you know whichever one. So let's go ahead and now change this into an add problem, okay? Um, let's stay with black here. I'm changing it, but yet I'm kind of moving on here. So like a three over, 10 X squared, let's just say add for lack of anything better to do, seven over 15 X. Okay, now if my least common denominator is a 30 X, all right, then I need to make this denominator a 30, what did I say, 30 X, I meant 30 X squared. If this denominator is a 10 X squared, I need to turn it into a 30 X squared. If this is 15X, I need to turn it into a 30X squared. So in other words, what do I have to multiply this by to get 30X squared? Well, three, right? 10 times three gives me that, and I don't have to mess with anything with the letters. So for this first fraction, I'm gonna multiply by three over three. And I always kind of write it. It was, I didn't do a very good job there, but kind of. Okay, so then that's gonna give me a three times three on top is gonna to give me a nine, and then I'll have a 30 X squared on the bottom. Okay, now I gotta do that same process to this one over here. I have a 15 X, but I need it to be a 30 X squared. So 15 times two is gonna get the 30 part of it. So I know I gotta multiply by two over two. Okay, now I've only got one X, I need X squared. So I also have to multiply by an X. So I'm multiplying by 2x over 2x. And notice the reason I write it 2x over 2x and 3 over 3 is because if as long as I multiply this fraction by a form of 1, I'm not changing it. So I'm not changing the problem. And a lot of people will skip this and not put this on the bottom, not put this on the bottom. But technically, multiply across the top, that's going to give me a 14x. 
All right, well, the only way I can get a 30x squared on the bottom is to actually multiply those two things. So that's why it really needs to be written there, okay? And then um, no like terms. So the best I could do would be like a 14x plus a nine all over a 30x squared. Um, on the top, I can't, really, I can't take anything out. And so nothing simplifies. Okay, so again, I just kind of made that up, but you may have to do little easy ones like that. I don't know that you're gonna have to do more complicated ones like that. We're gonna take a look at a least common denominator that is more complicated. These had single terms. These had monomials at the bottom. So monomials, I mean, the thinking is the same, the process is the same, but sometimes monomials are way easier, okay? All right, so that takes care of our monomial, okay? So let's do one that's got more complicated denominators. Okay, so again, let's say that they're asking you to find the LCD. Okay, and maybe this time they give me a nine over a seven X squared plus a 28 X. And again, see, they're not setting this up for add or subtract. They're literally just giving you two rational functions and focusing on that least common denominator. So an X squared plus an eight X plus a 16. Okay, now I don't know how detailed I wanna do on this one. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we can't look at these and tell the pieces and parts that make these up. All right, so first step is we need to factor the denominators. So factor the denominators, I'm gonna abbreviate there. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna do. In my very first step, all I'm gonna do is factor the denominators. So, and I am gonna rewrite this, so nine over, I can take out a seven X. So I take out seven X. That's gonna leave me with an X in that first term. 28 divided by seven is four, so plus four. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and keep the and sign in there because we're not adding or doing anything. All right, and then when I factor this, well, it's a trinomial leading coefficient of one. So I should be able to guess and check this. Four and four, four times four is 16. Everything is plus is going across. That's going to give me the positive eight. Okay, so now that I've factored those bottom ones, I can see all the pieces that make them up. This one is made up of two pieces. This one is made up of two pieces or two factors. Okay, now there's lots of different ways to do this. You can just like later on as we start to add these and do more things with it, I'm going to probably do, okay, what is this denominator missing? Multiply it by that one. What is this denominator missing? Multiply it by that form of one. I mean, that's the easiest way to do it, all right? But your textbook, if you actually read your textbook, goes through a process and it says, pick everything in the first, because I'm trying to come up with least common denominator, right? So pick everything in the first is what it tells you. So I would pick a seven X and the X plus four. And then it says, add any unlisted factors from the second one. All right, so that's already been listed once. And then I've got another one, so I would have to include that second one to try to form that least common denominator, okay, which is going to be a what? A 7x, x plus 4 to the second. So that is the actual least common denominator, and that's a process that works. Okay, but some think about this, though. Let's see if I can go to yet a different color. Let's go with this color. Okay, so. If I do the, oh, what's the first one missing? What's the second one missing? That's more setting it up for if I was actually going to add it. But what's this one missing? Well, this one's missing the seven and the X, right? And what's this one missing? Well, I've got seven X, I've got an X plus four, but I'm missing another X plus four. So this one would be multiplied by the X plus four over the X plus four. Okay, well, then if I took this times this times this, I could see the denominator. I can see that least common denominator. And again, I can see it here, seven X, there's the X plus four, here's another X plus four. Okay, so you can see it that way. So like I said, once we actually go to the part where we have to add them, and you may, I mean, in this section, you may have to go ahead and add some easy ones at the beginning. But like I said, I look at both denominators pieces, and then I say, okay, what is this one missing that 
is over here, but I don't have, which is a second x plus four. And then what is this one missing? Well, it's missing the seven x. That's how I choose what to multiply by, okay? So technically my original example said, find the least common denominator, which is that answer right there. If we wanna go ahead and add them up, all right, if I wanna go ahead and add, which is not what the question said to do, but we could go ahead and do that. All right, I'm going to, what I would do on this, all right, that's a binomial, right? So I would write down nine parentheses, x plus four, all right? And let's assume it was an add, okay? And then I would, I already know what my least common denominator is. So I would write that once, all right? And then I'm gonna add to that, what I get when I multiply those two things, which would be a 77x. So 77x, this was not designed to really add. All right, this is gonna be a distribute. All right, let's go to a different color so it stands out a little bit. This is gonna be a 9x plus a 36. All right, nine and 77. All right, what is it, 16 carry the one? Don't let me make a mistake, 86. 77 and nine, I hate doing arithmetic in my ass. Good, 16 carry the one, it is 86, check, that's good. All right, and then plus 36, all over a seven X, and then an X plus four quantity squared. All right, I don't know about grace common factor, they're even. So I know I could take a six out of both of the, or a two out of both of those. I don't know if 80, I don't have a calculator and I don't want to do this in my head. You could try 86 and see if it divides by seven. If, I know 36 doesn't divide by seven. So I would say nothing's going to factor out of that top to cross out because it would have to be a seven X. Not going to happen. So that would be the answer if I was supposed to actually add them. Okay, so we kind of did like two problems in one there. You will have my math lab questions that say, say no more than find the least common denominator. All right, then you might have to go ahead and add some that have unlike denominators. All right, kind of hoping not, but maybe. Okay. All right, let's do one more and then, then we'll call it quits. All right, just and we'll do it just as a find the least common denominator. Okay, so one more example here. Find. The least common denominator. Okay, let's suppose they give you an x minus one. And they do an x squared plus an x minus a six. They put the and in there because they really have no intention of you actually doing anything with that. X plus two, x squared minus, nope, let's make that a plus four x, and then a plus three. All right, so again, I, I took the time in the last one to rewrite each one of those when I factored them. You wouldn't necessarily, it just depends on how cluttered up you want your problem to be. This is a leading coefficient of one. So technically I could do it right there, all right, right underneath it. And I could look at that and go, okay, I need a two and a three. So a three and a two, they've gotta be unlike signs and I need it to be a positive one. So a plus and a minus, all right. And then just cross it out. Okay, now, like I said, it will get cluttered if you start doing it that way, but some people are good with that. All right, if I do this one, it's going to be an X and an X. Everything's pluses. Okay, so we could do that. And then, basically, it's one of everything. Everything from this one plus anything over here that you're missing. Okay, so then, least common denominator, everything from the first one. So X minus 2, X plus 3. And then anything in the second one that you're missing, well, I'm missing the x plus one. Okay, so then that's the least. And you will have questions where the only thing they ask you to do is find that least common denominator, okay? And then, like I said, you might have to add a few. Okay, so this is definitely one of those sections where it would not have had to have been split over two days, because I think I could, because like when we do on Monday, all we're gonna do is add and subtract them with unlike denominators. Okay, so I will probably have a review that we will start with again. We'll start with a review on Monday and then we'll add and subtract unlike denominators. But so I'm, I'm good. All right, so have a good day. Enjoy the warm weather we're having. If you're in the Zoom meeting and you've got questions, I will stay a little bit longer after everybody logs out and you can ask questions. Otherwise, have a good long weekend. When, okay, so I have a question. If it says complete factorization, do you want like X equals blank? 
Okay, well, first of all, it's not what do I want, it's what math ex my math lab wants. No, uh, on the graded homework. Okay, but still, that's not mine. That's a that's a thing. Um, there's no way you can share. Can you can't share your screen with me? Can you? No. Um, it says complete the factorization. Yeah. So that just means take the expression and factor it completely. Would be my guess. So you shouldn't have an x equals. Let me see if I can log in really quick here. The canvas and then I'm assuming what graded homework is this? Number four. I was just double checking that I did it correctly. Okay. All right. Well, let me, I mean, if you've got time and you are interested in waiting, give me two seconds to log in and I will see what I can come up with. Well, that's not the right password because I typed it too fast. <laughs> Should never try. Okay, now my password's not working. Yeah, okay, it's not going to let me log in. What the heck? Okay, so so much for that idea. That's not happening. It's not letting me log in. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to pull it up and look at it. But my guess is if it said complete the factorization, you should not have an answer that says x equals. You should have an expression that's been factored and it would be in factored form. So it might have, it might look like my hand in the screen right now, it, a factor, something that's been factored completely is gonna look like this. So a couple binomials all applied together. Okay, thank you. Okay. Right. Um, that is the same for this one, okay. just I because of COVID. So, right. okay. so they don't take attendance and it's not part of the grade, but if you have a high enough attendance rate, then you do get a few bonus points on okay. the final exam. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Hey there. They did email it to me. Yes, I have not down.